In this video, we'll give you a brief introduction to ISF shaders, where you can find, interact with, and download shader files, and how to use them with the ISF loader. In short, shaders are instructions for the GPU on how to generate or manipulate visuals. On the About page of the website editor.isf.video, we can find the following description. ISF stands for Interactive Shader Format and is a file format that describes a GLSL fragment shader, as well as how to execute and interact with it. So, rather than it just being a set of instructions that can be executed, the interactive shader format adds a variety of parameters that we can interact with in real time. On the same website, we can browse for existing and freely downloadable shader files. Before we decide to download any, we can also interact with the shaders right here in our browser. These parameters we will also be able to control in live with the ISF loader. Important to note here is that some shaders act as generators, which generate visuals, while others act as filters, which in live's context we would call effects. To distinguish a generator from the filter here on the website, Generally, we see an input image at the top of the shader parameters when it's a filter, while this is missing when it's a generator. Let's download this specific shader, which is a generator. We get a zip file that includes a file with the FS extension, another file with the VS extension, and sometimes some sample material. We're only going to use the file with the FS extension, so the rest can be discarded. In live, we can drop the ISF loader on a MIDI track or on an audio track. Since this shader is a generator, let's use an audio channel and keep in mind that it should be at the start of our signal chain, so we can then manipulate the shader's output further with other effects or even with other ISF loaders using filter shaders. As the ISF loader is telling us, we can just drop the shader file into the device. We then see a panel with some information about the shader, and the configure window immediately pops up as well. The configure window contains all of the shader's parameters, as well as a reset button at the top to reset all parameters to their original values. Here we can interact with the shader the same way as we did on the website. To be able to automate any of the parameters, we will have to map them to dials in the main device interface. There is a maximum of 16 dials that we can use, so once we've found a couple of parameters that would be cool to interact with in our live set, we hit the map buttons right next to those parameters and we will see their names appear above the mapped dials. If we then right click the dials, we can choose to automate them. We can now also close the configure window as our main parameters can now be directly accessed in the device interface.